Let's talk about organizing a video project. Now, in the previous lesson, we talked about workflow, but to me, there's something that kind of happens before the workflow. Have you ever heard the expression that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step? To me, the first step is organizing the project. If there is one thing that I could give you based on my own experience and the mistakes that I have made, it would be this in organizing the project. Now, don't forget, we're being creative here, but please stay alert because this is technical information. Organizing a project, you're sitting down at your desk, or in my case, a client comes in. You come up with a great idea. My client comes up with a great idea. There's things I need to know before I can begin inputting all my material so I can process and create output. I have to know some things about the project. Now, this is strictly journalism stuff. It really is, but there are five questions. So in pulling it all together, we can start with who is your audience? Now, I've done projects for adults. I've done projects for children. If I were doing this video production for children, my entire way of doing it would be different, wouldn't it? So keep an eye out for that audience. I think that's kind of important. The next one is basically, well, what are your goals? Now, to me, goals are the target. They're the destination, and they help to focus you. So have some really good goals for this video production, or if it's your client, have them explain what they think their goals are for what they want you to do for them. Third, this is my favorite one. When is it due? Most people have an unrealistic expectation on how long it takes to do something, and sometimes my clients want it done like yesterday. But even if I'm doing this myself, I set a date for when it's going to be done, and that helps like goals focus me to get the project done. Am I getting it done every week that goes by if I got enough done to get it done by my target date? Where is it going is the next one, and that's important too. Now, we talked about that in the previous lesson. The whole idea is beginning with the end in mind. Is it going to be on a DVD or is it going to be some low resolution something you're putting on to, say, your personal website? It's important to know that because we design based on where it's going. And the last one is just more of a motivation for you. Why are you doing it? Now, I enjoy teaching. I love teaching. I love doing this. And I hope that honestly projects through when you're listening to me. But you and I, we have all been and had to sit through, for example, teachers who don't really want to be there. And they're doing it for a paycheck. Motivate yourself in a video project and you're going to be better at it. You're going to want to do more. You're going to want to make it personal. You're going to want to make it the best thing that's ever been in the world. Why are you doing this? Now, pulling it together a little bit more, be aware of your resources. Now, if you're the one doing this in terms of editing, but everybody else is giving you the stuff, well, then your resources are a really good computer, good screens, multiple screens if you can get them, good size keyboard, a drawing tablet, or, you know, whatever you're going to use. Those are your resources. But if they're not, if you're part of the process, which I usually am, then it could be cameras, lighting, studios, all of that stuff. Be aware of your resources and then identify what you can do and what you can't do. Well, I have a studio and it's a lit studio, but it's a small one. Some of the things I need to do, I can't do in-house. But let me give you a trick that I have found. In Wichita, that's where I live, Wichita, Kansas, USA, in Wichita, we have places that you can rent that are studios. Now, they're already fitted out. They got the whole kit, but they cost a lot of money, and they charge by the hour. So you go in there, and, man, you are ready to rock because you want to spend as little time as possible. I have found since I have the stuff, I've got the lighting and the cameras and that, is that if I can go into town and find a building that's for rent, maybe it's an old warehouse, nobody's going to pick it up. They'll give it to me for a whole day for a lot less than maybe what an hour would cost at a studio. Just an idea. What can you do in-house and what can't you do? Mind map the project out. So you've got a general idea for a project. I'm going to take all my holiday videos and put them together for my relatives. That would be the beginning of the project. And then you mind map it. I'll give you an example in a second. You create an outline of what you want, and then you put that all together in a storyboard. Now, here's an example of a video production for actually what I'm doing right now. I'm doing training for Adobe Premiere Elements 11. So I've got all these things that I need to get it done. The videos, the computer, the lighting when I do my own videos for the project itself. 
Mind mapping is a process of just kind of sitting down and drawing little circles on a piece of paper and putting ideas in those little circles. I find that mind mapping is the best way to do just about anything. I don't care if it's a barbecue you're going to do over the weekend. It doesn't matter. You can mind map it out. Now you've got all of this done. You've got an outline. You might want to think of storyboarding. Now storyboarding is no more than a piece of paper with a bunch of rectangles on it and some lines underneath it where you can put it together more or less maybe something like this. Each one of those cells represents a segment of the video that you're working with. I do like to think of these as concise beginning to ending type of segments. So I can move them around if I want to, but each piece represents a piece of the video. So in the end, it's about organization. Organization is not just important, it's the key. Organize your project before you start.